What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be learning how you can upload release notes for your test flight beta builds via CICD. We're going to be using code magic to stick with the theme that we've started a couple weeks ago. So without further ado, drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new to the channel, and let's jump into it. So I've already got a free code magic account set up here. I've also taken the liberty of creating a very simple, basic empty iOS application here so we're gonna go ahead and open it up you can apply this of course to your actual app but since we are doing a example here we're gonna be using this dummy app now there is not a whole lot going on in here if we open this on up we literally have one view controller and we have a background color set on it. So let's say we wanted to submit this to AppStore Connect for beta testing. Let's say we make a change. Let's say the change that I make in here is I say uh, the views background color is now going to be system pink. Pretty groundbreaking change and we now want all of our testers on test flight to test out this change. So the first thing I'm going to call out here is we do need to have a code magic account which you can create for free. You further need to have a Apple developer account with App Store Connect uh, available to you. So this is kind of uh, you know a, a gimme without me saying it but I'll say it anyways you need to have access to the App Store submission portals to further follow along. But in here I've got this iOS Academy app set up already and if you go under test flight you'll see that there are some prior betas that I've been playing around with here. So I submitted for version 1.0 uh, builds number 3 and 4. So let's talk about how we get the release notes or create even the release notes and get them up into Code Magic's CI pipeline to get them to Appstruct Connect. So first things first, we want to increment the release version. So instead of the version being incremented, I'm going to go ahead and bump the build to perhaps 10. Now it's not going to conflict with the version that we've got here already. So now that we've done that, we can basically close up Xcode here. The next thing that we want to go ahead and do is open up Terminal. We're going to be working in here for just a little bit. We're going to CD into our project folder. And in here, I've got a code magic YAML file set up already. If you're not familiar with setting up a YAML file, take a look at the first CICD video on this channel to get up and running. So I've taken the liberty of setting up some logic in here, which is going to do the following. So first things first, we set up code signing for our application so it can actually uh, be signed with a App Store distribution certificate. I've got a follow-up video coming for that shortly. And then we build the app for distribution. The most important part about this file at the moment is this piece right here under publishing. So you'll notice we have an App Store Connect uh, segment here with a API key, key ID, and issuer ID. So you might be wondering, well, what are these? Where do I get them from? So back in our code magic dashboard, we have the app added here. And if I go to settings under the tab here for environment variables, you'll see that I've added four variables here, which correspond to what we saw in the YAML file. Now I'm not going to go too deep in this particular video where to get these and how to add them, but you'll need to have this set up via Appstra Connect's internal portal. So you can get all these components and keys from there and add them here so you can use them in your YAML file. Now you might be wondering, well, where's the release note aspect of this? And this is where I want to talk about Code Magic's magic actions. So instead of your CI pipeline forcing you to wait for Appstra Connect to process your build so it can upload your release notes, there's a really cool thing that Code Magic has done here where you can supply your release notes, and Code Magic is smart enough to figure out how to go about uploading them after your uh, new build and version of your binary has been uploaded. So, how do we go about doing that? Well, we're going to go ahead and go back into Terminal, and we can see these are the files that we've got in here at the moment. We'll need to create a new file. So, we're going to use the touch command. And we're going to try to spell it correctly. And we're going to create a file, and it's going to be called release notes. Make sure you spell that correctly as well. Dot JSON. Once you've created it, you can open it up in your editor of choice. I'm going to stick with Adam here. And in here, you can specify release notes for every single 
uh, language that AppStore Connect supports. So what is the format that we need to do this? Well, the first key in this is going to be language. Its value in our case is going to be en dash us. The next key I'm going to toss in here is going to be text, and this is going to be the actual release notes that we upload. So we can go ahead and say, check out how you like the new color with an exclamation mark. Now let's say we wanted to support uh, additional languages here. So I'm going to add a comma there, we'll paste that. And let's say we wanted to support English for Great Britain, so GB. We can go ahead and change that there. And let's say we wanted to spell the word color here slightly differently for all of our friends in the UK. So now that we've got release notes added here, you might be wondering, well, we probably need to make a change to our code magic YAML file. And uh, I was wondering, in fact, the exact same thing. And actually, the reason that we have this open here and haven't changed it is because we don't need to. Code Magic is smart enough to detect that we have a release notes JSON file here, and it can do the release notes uh, upload once our app upload has succeeded behind the scenes. So let's actually go ahead and we're going to go into terminal. I'm going to go ahead and do a git add, which is going to stage all of our changes. Now, what changes do we have? Well, we actually changed quite a few things. First and foremost, we changed the view controller, the build version. We also edited the release notes file. So we are going to commit all of this. We're going to say added release notes. I'm going to go ahead and push this. And hopefully uh, this goes without saying this is set up on GitHub via a Git source repository. And now when we come back here into code magic, what we can actually go ahead and do is run the pipeline. Now before I run it, I want to do a quick recap of our code magic YAML file. Once again, there's going to be a video I'm going to follow up with so we can go through the weeds of how to set up distribution to test flight. Essentially, what we've got going on in here in this my pipeline workflow is we set up a group called admin. This admin group is the group that owns all of these environment variables, which Code Magic needs access to so it can communicate to App Store Connect on your behalf. The next thing that's happening here is we set up the keychain and we fetch signing information, certificate, provisioning profile, all all that stuff that the App Store needs. Now we've specified this as iOS App Store. There are other specifications for development. Next up, we set up signing, we set up code signing, and then we actually build the IPA, which is the extension for iPhone applications that go up to App Store and Apple to review. The next segment here actually reviews the artifact directories where your build outputs will be added to. And then finally, the most important step, under publishing, we publish the app, aka upload it with this API key, key ID, and issuer ID. And once everything has finished, whether it failed or succeeded, we get an email with a notification to hello at iosacademy.io. So without further ado, let me go ahead and hit start new build. We only have one workflow, so it's going to default to this one here. And I'm going to go ahead and start this on right now. So if you take a look, the first step that you see here is it's going to prepare the build machine. It's going to fetch all of our applications sources from the repo, aka a git clone. And uh, I'll go ahead and pause it here or feel free to fast forward as this continues. Depending on the size of the project, it'll take anywhere between uh, a few minutes to maybe 10, 20 minutes. It really depends how big your source code is. The last thing I'll say is before I pause it here, under App Store Connect, let me just refresh the page here. You'll see that we don't have build number 10. And the release notes will not show up immediately after the app is uploaded. The release notes come afterwards because the app has to process and Code Magic has a pretty cool feature known as post processing. And they can, uh, behind the scenes, asynchronously upload those release notes without you having to sit and wait for them. So looks like this is chugging along a lot quicker than I had anticipated. My assumption is this build IPA will take the longest but let's go ahead and uh, pause it here and hopefully this wraps up pretty soon all right guys it looks like our build has succeeded here it took roughly five minutes give like half a second or half a minute I should say 
five and a half minutes it has taken here. Let's jump on over to Appstra Connect. I'm going to refresh this page and we should see build 10 in the list. However, like I mentioned before, it's probably processing, which it in fact is. So we do have build 10 here and it is processing. Now, while this guy processes, let's take a look at some of the output in terms of what happened here. So build IPA for distribution. So actually building our Xcode project by far took a significant amount of time of this five and a half minutes. Thereafter, we jumped into the publishing stage. The publishing step here basically takes the app, it verifies that everything looks good, it does some validation, and then it does an upload and it reports that no errors were encountered uh, when the upload occurred. And after it's uploaded, it's basically good to go and done. And then it does this machine cleanup. Now, one thing you probably don't see here, which is by design, is you don't see release notes as being a step that you need to upload. And the reason for that, again, is you can't upload release notes until this is done processing. Now, this is a fairly small app. Processing takes anywhere between 5 to 10 minutes. So I'm not going to bore everyone and make you sit through that. But after this is processed, you're able to click into the build. I'll click into that one there. And you'll see your release notes populated here in what to test. Now, you'll notice also on the right hand side where it says English US. If you supported different uh, localizations, you'll see those there as an option in a drop down menu. But since this app currently does not, we don't see that there. Going back to test flight, once again, there is build number 10 still processing. That's how you can upload release notes in a nutshell. Now, uh, it's definitely uh, known to me that we have not gone through the video yet where we actually talk about uh, uploading the build. So that's the next video that's coming to you pretty soon. Stay tuned for that. I wanted to show the release notes aspect of this since this is something that is incredibly tedious and frankly just kills a ton of time. And the fact that you can automate it really simply without having to set up a lot of uh, nonsense along the way, barring these like 15 lines of code, makes life a lot easier. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below. Uh, leave me a comment let me know if you want to see more CICD, specifically if there's anything within the realm of CICD that you want to see. And of course, subscribe for more iOS Swift, Swift UI content. I've been a little slow with the uploads lately since, uh, you know, work and whatnot has been fairly hectic, but plan on getting back into the swing of things fairly soon. So thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.